The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 3rd. Yeah, it's the November 3rd, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know, I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more important, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you got a question but you can't dial in, well, go ahead and send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfn.com. But inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a sea of green out there. The sea of green goes like this. The Dow's up 159, the S&P 32, NASDAQ 110. Russell's up 42. That's a big move, 2.5 points there, 2.5% there. Uh, some eyes are up 63. Trendy's up 179. Gold's up 9 bucks. Silver's up 50 cents. Natural gas up 3 pennies. 32 Treasury's up nearly 2 points. The only thing to the downside, the spot volatility, that bodes well for the S&P 500. And lights be crude off 90 pennies as we speak right now. Late in the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you've got Gartner Inc. up 52 bucks, 15%. Mercado Libre, 42 bucks, 3%. Monolithic Power Systems, 20 bucks, 4%. Insulate Corporation, 14%. Quaker Hooten, up 16 bucks. That's an 11% move out there. To the downside, the Shakers, Fox Factory Holdings. 36% down 30 bucks. Paylocity off 27 bucks, 15%. Bill Holdings 29%, 25 bucks. Booking off 22, that's a less than 1% move out there. And Abri SPAC is off uh, 20 bucks, that's a 74% move there. Ouch, that is a stinger. But there's no stinger when we take a look at the equity futures out here. Let's go shift uh, screens. Let's go take a look at the daily equity future contracts because now we've got to take a look at resistance levels out here. That's what this set of charts is going to help us do. So we can see that in the ES Mini, we're above profile. Uh, resistance, 43.17. Odds favor, that price is going to go target that 44.23.25 level. That is a TD9 count breakdown area. In the case of the Russell 2000, also are the NQ, I should say, closing above the top of a bearish structure daily profile. As long as price remains above that today, 15.309 and a quarter is its next price target area. Now, the interesting thing today, this is the area to watch today, and that's going to be the Dow Equity Future contract. You can see that price right now is trading above, slightly trading above its TD9 count breakdown resistance level at 33,990. And we're going to go take a look at intraday charts for the Dow to see if there's some kind of topping patterns out here that we want to be aware of as price hits that resistance area. But if price closes above 33,990, that's going to tell us that what price wants to do is go gravitate towards its next TD9 count breakdown level, and that's up at the 35,357 area. So that becomes a new price target with a close today above 33,990. In the case of Russell 2000, also above profile level. So each of these equity future contracts have broken through the sellers. That was at the top of their profile, and now they go on to the next area. And that next area, again, is that TD9 count breakdown area. And inside the Russell 2000, that's at 1,890. Now, what we can see out here is that uh, two of the four have confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signals out there. YM is one that has that. And if you take a look at, uh, and if somebody were to ask me, somebody asked me this question, hey, Stevie, 
What do you think of all the indicators and tools that you use? What do you think is the best one? And my answer would be it's the Rhodes Mintum Indicator. It's the one that gives the most consistent signals out there, both at tops and at bottoms. Here is just simply a bar chart. I do have the bullish reversal candles that are turned on in my system out here. And you can see here's the Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom that just formed out here earlier this week on Monday. If we take a look at the last bottom that we had last October, what do we have? We had a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom pattern there that identified the uh, top. If we just simply pull this back, you're going to see a few Rhodes Mintum Indicator signals. They've all identified pretty decent rallies out there. Uh, if I keep taking this back, we can go back here as to what, March of 2020 out there. We had signals going. We've got these signals over here. This is in the July inside the May 2020 time frame. So these patterns, it's a really cool pattern out here. It's one that you should really want to learn. And the easy way to do that, just subscribe to the newsletter. You can get access to uh, a couple of workshops that review that specific pattern. So we want to take a look at the Dow Equity Future Contract. So let's go take a look at that, see if there's any kind of short-term signals that we're taking a look at here. And here... We've got, uh, we look at the, uh, I start with the smallest time frame that we have. The smallest time frame is a 10 minute chart. 10 minute chart had wave number seven, had a Rhodes Mentum indicator top, and all price was able to do so far is get back and test support. Support has held. If we take a look at a TD9 count on the 15 minute basis, price also pulled back, tested support, the bottom of its profile. So that held. If we take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart, it's a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. This is a key reversal bar that formed right here uh, at 1030. And what's price doing? Consolidate with inside that profile support has held we also on a 60 minute basis have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top again a key reversal bar confirming that that was one that came in as we came on the air at 11 o'clock support here is down at 33,893 we're nowhere near that area but maybe price gravitates all the way down there if I look at the larger time frames out here the only other signal that we have at the moment is a TD9 count top for the five hour time frame chart as price approaches 34,146 34,146 is the TD9 count breakdown level for that. But if price is able to close above, let me give you the number. That number is 34,104. That TD9 count on the five-hour chart gets negated. And that says that we had the higher price out there. And with regard to the Dow Equity Future contract, it closed above the 33,990 level. Again, brings us into getting back. Uh, I thought I had another. Oh, you know what? I think I just have one line turned on here. So I don't recall off the top of my head that other T. I, I don't have, recall the other TD9 count breakdown. Oh, I can give it to you. It's right here. It would be at uh, 35,357. That would become the next price target for the uh, YM, the Dow Equity Future Contract. Now, because it's up at resistance, I don't know how the day is going to play out. But what I can do is I can give you a guide that you can follow to be able to interpret the market. And we're going down to real short-term time frames. I'll show you what I mean here. And that is... The cool thing about the TD9 count pattern is what it does is it objectively gives you and I support and resistance levels. And that's a beautiful thing. That way, we're consistent here. And uh, the red lines are the uh, uh, what I use as a support. And the green lines are your resistance areas. You break through a red line, you're likely to head lower. You break through a green line, you're likely to head higher out here. But it also has some other meanings. What we can see here, this is a 15-minute time frame chart, that for the most part, with the exception of about a half an hour, Really, it was probably more like 20 minutes. That price on any pullback has found support at these breakout levels. That's on a 15 minute chart. That says watch 33,901 to the downside should the Dow decide to tank later on this afternoon. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. So let's do this here. We've got a number of requests that have come in. Let's start getting to those. I don't want to get too far behind. But I do want you to stick around because uh, I'm going to show you how the market is very likely to form its next high. Now, if the market closes like where we're at about right now, uh, that's really going to very likely going to come to fruition. And if you ask me what are the probabilities, we'll put it up there at a significant probability. So it's going to be worth sticking around. But I want to just kind of see how the, uh, the markets here trade for a bit. So let's get to these requests. The first one coming in uh, yesterday towards the end of the show, J Bro wanted to take a look at the SMHs. So with regard to the SMHs, we've got a TD9 count bottom pattern. We've got a wave number seven. That's the letter G pattern. Doesn't matter that we've got two. We only need one price is trading above its bearish structured uh, daily profile it uh, accomplished that task uh, a couple of days ago that was back on the first and now what price is doing your next battleground out there Jay bro is at 149.47 if the SMHs can clear that level then price is going to go target its next resistance area and that would be the high from October the 12th and that high is up to 154.06 if price can get above that then you're looking at a move back to 158.79 that's the daily chart signals. The weekly chart says I've got resistance at 151.10 or thereabouts. And if I can close above that, we're headed higher. And on a uh, monthly chart, uh, what price did was it pulled back, it tested, it rejected support, the bottom of his profile. And this is suggesting it wants to make a run to 161.17. So first things first, and that first battle is going to be inside that, uh, at that 149.47 level. Let me make sure that the SMHs aren't even trading into that. Right now, I know I've got a little bit of a delay. No, they're not. So, um, but watch 149.47. Thanks for waiting an extra day for that information. And I do hope that that helps you. The next request coming in from Alton, and he wants to take a look at Pfizer. With regard to Pfizer, first on a monthly basis, this is going to complete a TD9 count bottom pattern this month. This is suggesting that Pfizer wants to rally up towards 37.69. You're going to get a TD9 count bottom on the weekly chart and no, just a TD9 count bottom pattern. But what you need to see Pfizer do is you really want to see this close above its red oscillator and change line. And that number right now is 3120. So you'd love to see price close above 3120 today. Can it do that? Well, it can do anything that it wants. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for Pfizer, what I don't have is a bottom pattern. Yeah, I've got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. Oh, I take it back. 
we've got a bottom pattern that's as of today as long as this gap to the upside holds again we're taking a look at Pfizer so each of my pat well not each of the patterns but the Rhodes momentum indicator pattern requires for a bottom a bullish reversal candle and for a top it requires a, a, a bearish reversal candle so this gap to the upside, that is a bullish reversal candle. And that would suggest that if price can close above the center of its profile, the center of its profile reading is a 31.11, odds would favor that price wants to make move to 31.70. Um, so that's what I see when I take a look at the Pfizer. And by the way, if price get above 3171, uh, then we'd see a move up towards 3412. So the monthly looks good. The weekly is looking pretty good, except for that oscillator and change line. And the daily also has a uh, bottom signal. So you want to watch those resistance levels. So Alton, I hope that that helps you out with regard to Pfizer. Inside the Tiger's Den, it was Coda who wanted to take a look at AMD. So as we take a look at AMD, what do we know? We know that price is consolidating. It's trading inside its sell zone as we speak right now. Now, the top of that sell zone is 111.31. The high for the day so far, 111.18. If price can close above 111.31, Coda, then you've got a change in trend signal. And the reason why we'd have that is because price is trading above 108.97. That was a TD9 count breakdown area. And so if you can take out that next level of resistance on the daily time frame, you have a change in trend for the daily time frame. With regard to the weekly, the weekly shows that price is dealing with resistance as well. And that's the top of its profile. So you've got a couple of battles, one at 111.31, and you've got another one at 111.31. How's that work? Both the weekly and the daily are exactly the same. Well, what we can say is that that's a strong resistance level, Coda. And if price gets above that, you're headed higher. The next battle would be at 120.09. And then the battle after that would be 125.67. So I'd have to say that AMD charts look pretty good. But what you're doing here is who's going to win, the bulls or the bears, the buyers or the sellers? Because that's what AMD is uh, doing right now. It's testing out that strength or weakness. If we take a look at the next request coming in from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And Dan wanted to take a look at Juniper Networks. JNPR is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go see what they are doing out here. And this formed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And the cool thing is, with regard to that pattern, that was, that was confirmed by this gap to the upside. But do you find it odd that where price ran into resistance was right at that TD9 count breakdown level at 27.84? I don't find it odd at all. Again, it's objective. It is objective. There's not a technician that I know of that would have chosen 27.84 as the level where price broke down from. But the TD9 count pattern does it for us. So we don't have to worry about it. So you don't have to learn it. You don't have to learn some idiosyncrasy, uh, um, you know, uh, tool that Stevie has or something. No, this is this is as objective as you possibly can get. Back to Juniper now. Uh, so you know that that's a real key level of resistance, Dan. That's that TD9 count breakdown at 27.84. The weekly chart shows a buy the D point pattern. It's what it looks like to me out there. I haven't measured that, but that's, it's got to be pretty close. Well, let's just uh, not make it pretty close. We're not trading horseshoes here. There's your A to B. Let's just move that over to the C point. Yeah, that's more than a one-to-one -one A to B. So this week, you're getting a confirmed by the D point pattern. Now, what you really want to see price do here is get back inside its profile. To accomplish that task, you just need to close today above 2714, near 2713. So you'd love to see that. If you get back inside the profile, then you know you've got a battle at 2784. If you can overcome that battle, the next battle will be at 2804. And if you can overcome that battle, then the next one will be at 2940. But at least you know where the sellers are lined up here. And now it's time to see if that weekly chart can find the strength to get back inside its profile. So, Dan, I hope that helps you out with regard to Juniper. Let's go to our next request. Now, for this one, I've got to type it in because I only have four of those screens open at one time. That's okay. It'll just take a few moments here to populate. But this is for Coda. And Coda wants take a look at ticker symbol G-O-L-D. So that's what's going to be pulling up on our screens here momentarily. Where, what did I do here? Sorry. I know you don't know what I did, but I'm asking myself what I did because of what I saw on the screen. So as we take a look at uh, a Barrick Gold out here, what I don't have on Barrick Gold on a daily time frame is any kind of a bottom pattern out here. Do we need it? 
Yeah, no, uh, we don't need it because we're going to interpret the charts here. And by interpreting the charts, right now, if price can close back above, it traded below the bottom of its uh, a daily profile for more than two consecutive sessions. It actually did it for three consecutive sessions. Yesterday was session number three. Now, it's a bullish structured profile. And that says that if it was only a counter trend move, and this is what you want to watch for today, Coda. If it's only a counter trend move, price is going to find resistance at day's end at 1629. If price closes above 1629, and gosh, I hope it's not 1630. You know what I mean? But if it closed above 1629, let's call it 1635, 35, that would be good. Then that's telling you that what price wants to do is make its way to 1693. And 1693 is the top of that profile. Why? Because when price is able to close above the center of a bullish structured profile, you have all the support of those buyers behind you. It's like first in goal at the half yard line. And what do you do? You get everybody from behind to push the uh, quarterback through on that quarterback sneak. It's not so sneaky. This isn't sneaky as well. You close above the center of that profile, your odds are increased that you're going to make a run for those sellers are at. And they're up at that 1693 level. So, Coda, thanks for the request. Hope that helps you out with regard to Barrick Gold. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back. We'll look at BBAI, TGB, HUM, Tesla, and the GDX. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Ord joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors Bull Bear Ratios, and the Trend Panic Levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the uh, stock chart we've got up on our screen here, big bar, big bear AI holdings out here. 
And uh, you'd love to see it close above 139 today or 141 as we speak. And uh, so you've got a TD9 count roads momentum indicator bottom pattern. So that's a beautiful thing. Uh, we've got that slingshot in operation and price taken at a second level of resistance. That's at the 139 level. So close above that is going to suggest a change in trend. Now that change in trend says I've got another battle in store. And that next battle that's in store for us would appear to be at about the buck 65 level. And at a buck 65, we've got the bottom of it its weekly profile out there. What else do I have? I don't have anything on the monthly time frame. Uh, you know what I do have? I've got a trend line that I can show you. Uh, Dan, we're going to switch charts. You can draw this trend line in. Maybe you already have, but those folks that are listening or watching and doing the home game version of this, here are the trend lines with regard to B, big bear AI holdings out there. So today's move we can see running into a trend line resistance level. So you'd love to see it close above that as well. I know I had given you that buck 39. We can see at a buck 41 you're right in that trend level so you'd like to see it close above a buck 41 to suggest that you move now you've got some other trend levels out there um, that you're going to run into assuming that price can continue to move higher you know that would become those battleground areas out there so i think the trend lines are going to be helpful to you what did i okay good are going to be helpful to you in managing this one at least for its next steps to the upside out there so uh, looks good on the uh, daily and uh, best of luck to you, Dan. Let's go to the next request out here. And that is from Rye inside the Tiger's Den. And Rye wanted to take a look at Tseko Mines. D TGB is the uh, ticker symbol. Had a stellar day yesterday by closing above a buck 22. A buck 22 was its TD9 count breakdown level. This has what kind of a bottom? I don't know. It looks like a buy the D point bottom formed out here on the trading day of October the 27th. And now the question might be, where is it headed to next? Next upside target on a daily time frame would be the buck 41. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here, now that's a big old candle. Um, what's this telling us? We'd love to see a close above 130 today. Why? Because you'd be back inside the profile. And if you get back inside the profile, odds would favor maybe you're going to make a move to the sell zone. So 141, as I said, becomes the daily upside target. Turns out, that at between 142 and 149 is your bearish structured weekly profile. So that's the sell zone that is out there. Monthly chart just have a, has a consolidation with inside its profile level. So looks pretty good and looks like it wants to continue to move higher, a buck 41. I'm not saying that's what it's going to do on Monday or what have you, but right now it looks like that's what it wants to do. Again, that is to Seiko Mines. TGB is the ticker symbol. So, Rye, thank you for the request and best of luck to you on that trade. The next request coming in from Zip inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at ticker symbol A. H-U-M. Sounds like a Hummer to me. But what H-U-M is doing, which is Humana Inc., it is trading below breakout support. It closed below that yesterday, 484.25. If I asked you where's the next price target, where's the next price target, Zip? Exactly. It's the next TD9 count breakout level. That would be at the 460.38 area. Okay, easy enough for us to do that. Let's actually populate the weekly chart so we can see what kind of signals we have out here. And uh, what do we have? We don't have much. What we have is price trading above profile, but below its oscillator and change line on a weekly basis. So it's lost its momentum, but it does have support. So I gave you 460.38. Let's change that to 460.38 to 465.03. That is the next support zone that is likely where Humana is headed to. Uh, even the monthly chart has rejected its green oscillator and change line, chain, uh, trading into the buy zone of that monthly chart. It's a fairly wide range zone, about $50, 442 to 491 out there. But the daily chart is suggesting to you and I that this wants lower price, and I think it'll get down towards that 465, 460 level. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Zip, with regard to Humana. The next question coming in from not a trader is to take a look at Tesla. But I think not a trader is a trader. And I mean T-R-A-D-E-R, -E not the other kind of trader. So when we take a look at Tesla out here, what do we know? Well, what we do know is it's got a wave seven bottom. That's letter G. That's courtesy of the Chapman wave, just a small portion of it, a very small portion of it. And, but you do have that bottom signal. And now what we can see with regard to Tesla is price is trading above the top of its daily profile. So you got a wave seven bottom. You've got price taking out resistance, assuming that it closes above 
219.25 today. So then where would price be headed to next? That's a pretty easy call. That next level or that next battle is up at the 232.35 level. What's up there, Stevie? That is the bottom of that weekly profile. And if price can get above that, then at about 246.89, which happens to be the monthly oscillator and change line, that would become the next battle. And above that, it would be 265.41. That is the daily TD nine count breakdown area out there. Now, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside on a weekly time frame. That price projection, actually, let me give you the accurate price projection. I'll do that calculation off screen on my other set of charts out there because what I'm curious about is how close was it? And I think it was close enough. What is it? Oh, shoot, I'm on I'm on the black background screen. Jeez Louise, Stevie, 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 Stevie. Oh, well, I'll go back and redo those uh, those, uh, uh, those other white background charts because I don't think I was there. But anyway, here's what here's what we can see. You've got A to B equals CD downside inside of Tesla. And uh, the price projection was 192.05. Price got to 194.07. That's close enough for me. Why? This is a key reversal bar. Tesla on a weekly basis just confirmed or is confirming today a Gartley buy pattern. So you're above weekly uh, daily profile resistance. You're going to get a weekly buy pattern out here. So it does look like Tesla wants to make that move towards that 232.35 level. And again, uh, I'll just simply, uh, well, I'm going to try to do this. What the heck? Change screens. Why doesn't let me do that? Okay, here we go. So now we're back to the white background charts. You can see the uh, Tesla charts out there. You can see the TD9 count breakdown level on the daily time frame chart. Let me go back real quick while we've got about a minute to go because I don't think these charts were up. Here are the charts for Humana. Here's the TD9 count breakdown levels. Here's that next level at 460.38 and 465.03, the top of that weekly profile. Real quickly, let's go down to the uh, chart uh, that we had done just prior to that. That was T Seiko Mines, TGBD and this being the ticker symbol. There's your 141 level. That's the TD9 count breakdown area for the daily time frame. Above that, you get into the sell zone, 142 to 149. That's coming from that weekly profile. And finally, we go back one more chart, one more set of charts. That is BBAI. Dan, here's your TD9 count, that 139 level. And then you can see you've got a you've got your resistance at 165, the bottom of that weekly profile out there. So sorry about that for not being in the right place at the right time. But Stevie rectified that. And so now let's go on to our next request. And this is from Hector and Patty. And they want to take a look at the GDX out there. So let's go take a look at the GDX. This will populate here momentarily. The GDX having a nice day, or I assume that it's having a nice day. It was the last time I looked at it. Let me see. What is it doing? Yeah, it's having a wonderful day. But that wonderful day says, OK, all I've done is made my way up to where those sellers are at. Oh, uh, shoot. Now, what happened yesterday is that the GDX confirmed a Gartley buy pattern. How did it do that? Well, what it did was it confirmed an A to B equals CD pattern. Here is our A to B. Actually, it was a smaller A to B equals CD pattern that we had out there. Yeah, that's a smaller one than that. It was the one where this is the swing point right here from October 23rd. But let's let's not fret over that right now. What we want to know about the GDX is prices got resistance at 29.32 and 29.53. We'll be right back to finish looking at the GDX. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So back to the stock charts here for the GDX. Again, for Hector and uh, Patty, we're taking a look at the GDX, which formed a new profile today. So that's some new information. Uh, so you got a TD9 count bottom, regardless of whether it's uh, by the D point or not. Um, on the uh, weekly chart, uh, you've got a, a confirmed Gartley buy pattern, though. So that's a beautiful thing there. Um, and uh, so, but on the daily chart, that's really what you're interested in. And right now, it's that resistance level. And price needs to close about 29.32 to tell you that you want to go try to take out that TD9 count top. And in order for an A to B equal CD pattern here to form, price is going to have to close above the swing point from October 20th, Hector and Patty. And that high is 29.60. I'm sorry, it's 30.16. The volume there was 29 million shares. Now, today, you've already done 13 million shares. So you've got nice volume, but we're not up towards that swing point just yet. If it did get inside there, that would be a, a nice outcome. Inside there would be a 29.47, a close above that. On a weekly chart, things look pretty good. Looks like it wants to make a move eventually up to 32.36 out here. At 29.56, so you've got monthly profile resistance. So you got resistance at 29.56 and 29.32, and then finally 29.53. Those are your battlegrounds, and if price can overcome that, then the GDX is going to head higher. So I hope that helps you out. Hector and Patty, thanks so much for writing in. Our next request coming in from Coda inside the Tiger's Den. Coda wants to take a look at Moderna, M R N. And his question was, are there any TD9 count or TD13 counts on the charts? I checked for the TD13s on a, a different uh, tool that I've got out there, and there were none present as we speak. Is there a TD9 count? Yes, it's a negated one. That tells you about a strong downward momentum move. However, price this morning is back inside its daily profile. Again, we're taking a look at MRNA. So it is a bullish structured profile. And if in fact, price can close above 7551, 7591, uh, which it should be able to do, then price ought to make a run to the top of that profile. And Coda, that's printing out right now at 8136. If we look at the weekly time frame, you are in wave number seven, but as you know, that can't be confirmed until next week. That requires a higher low in order to confirm that pattern. But you've got to confirm it, but you do have a bottom potential pattern. It's just a matter of time. Uh, the weekly, you've got one on the monthly, which is going to complete a TD9 count pattern this month. No bottom sig, no bottom pattern on the uh, daily time frame, uh, but the price is back inside its profile. So respect what that means. And uh, the cool thing, though, also about this TD9 count on the monthly 
is that if it fails, and you'll know that it'll fail, right now it's too early in the month to say that this is going to be the low for Moderna. At the present time, though, that low is at 62.55. Let's assume that next that uh, Monday was the beginning of a new month, and the price closes below that low out there. That tells us that Moderna, which was once at 500 bucks, will get down to $13.53. And don't think that's out of the question. But as we speak right now, price wants to go target 81.36 out there. And if it can close above 81.36, and 87.09 becomes the number that price would likely go target. So again, no TD9 counts in play right now, <clears throat> other than on the monthly time frame, and no TD13 sequential counts or combo counts. And you're welcome. Excuse me, I had a little <clears throat> a little fly that uh, flew into my throat. It wasn't really a fly, but it was a dust particle. And uh, that's no fun. All right, so I uh, oh, went to see uh, Brian Culbertson last night. He, he, I saw him, um, I think, last year at a really small theater. Uh, this was a bit, bit larger theater, but he was great. But, uh, and he, he, he travels with amazing musicians. And a guy named Walter Beasley came out on stage. He played the entire show. Well, I would go see Walter Beasley on his own. It's just how good the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the members of the of, of his band uh, is out there. So a great concert. If it comes to your area, I recommend going to it. You will. I guarantee you'll have a good time. You get up, you dance a little bit, and you'll forget about all of the world's troubles out there. Now tomorrow night we go see Acoustic Alchemy. They are another great band. I mean, they are a wonderful band. So we see them tomorrow night. And then on Sunday, we're going to go see a band that I have been wanting to see. They don't travel very often. Or I've never seen them travel into my area. Jazz band called Special Effects, EFX out there. Kaylee Minucci, they, they are they're a great. They are a great jazz band. And then on Wednesday, the, uh, next week, I go see um, Keiko Matsui, great pianist out there. So it's nice that we've got a bunch of music. I think we've been out without any decent music here for uh, quite some time in the uh, South Florida area. You didn't want to know that, yeah, but uh, you wanted to know about Uber, right? That's what you're asking about. What's going on with Uber? That's what Nicholas wanted to know. And he said, hey, he was pleasantly surprised because he uh, woke up and I was on the air. He thought he missed the show. And yes, I was going to do the 9 a.m. or the 8 to 9 show. This morning, uh, but I had a uh, doctor appointment that canceled on me. It, it, it was an appointment that took me months to get, right? And then I finally get it. No, nothing wrong or anything like that. And then it was the only time that they could get. And then, boom, at the last minute, it's canceled. In any event, no big deal. But we want to go take a look at Uber out here. And uh, Uber is trading into a potential resistance area. It didn't hold before, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. That's at 47.85. The resistance level that we do want to worry about comes from the weekly time frame chart. So, Nicholas, I know you're looking at short term. But right now, it's the weekly chart that Uber that's telling us where the existing resistance is. You were looking for some intraday resistance. It is at 48.18, no matter how you slice it. And at 48.18, and on a weekly basis, we've been up to 48.08. That was earlier this morning. So that's your real resistance level that Uber needs to take out. Now, price is trading into a swing point. That swing point dated back to the week of August the 4th. And that swing point had volume here of 80 to uh, 208 million shares. And so far right now, this week, you're up with, you are up with, only 93 million shares. So you're moving into a swing point with light volume, moving into the top of the profile. That's a resistance uh, level out there. Um, uh, let me give you a 30 minute chart. So maybe you, you wanted an Uber intraday chart out here. If we take a look at the, uh, as a play on words, obviously, that's, a, that's courtesy of David White. Um, but here, I don't see any kind of a top. So the 30 minute chart says, I want to continue to move higher. Um, now, maybe there's another time frame chart that's got a top. So we also use a 65 minute chart. We take a look at um, a stock that tra trades, trades or trades, depending on how you want to call it, between uh, 930 and uh, 4 p.m. Because you've got what? Uh, how many 65 minute charts? Five 65 minute, uh, uh, five 65 minute bars. I like to have equal bars out there. Um, if I take a look at that 65 minute, there's no topping signal here as well. So it's really going to be all about that. Uh, so it looks like it should be able to overcome that level. But that's where the sellers exist. Uh, that's your level that you're dealing with. That's at 48.18. So, Nicholas, glad that we were able to help you out and uh, have a, a wonderful day.
somebody wanted me to take a look at something, or I typed in SE, but I don't have a clue what SE means. So maybe it wasn't that. Maybe I just was typing something in. So uh, let's do this here. I had mentioned to you. Um, uh, oh, okay. Uh, you want my uh, IBRX? So uh, we're going to uh, we're going to break here. I'll just put up IBRX. See if these charts here populate. I, I, I haven't totally read the question. When we come back to this break, we're going to go look at how the markets are likely going to form their next top. The pattern associated with the next top out there. What are the odds? Well, this is a pattern that has worked since the uh, uh, 2020 time frame. That's as far back as I went. So stay tuned for the close of the show. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Mystery solved, folks. It was SNP. Want to take a look at C Limited? SE is a ticker symbol. Here's what we know: You've got a TD9 count bottom that formed two days ago. Price is now inside its profile. You've got a resistance zone between 45.32 and 46.09, but we're going to increase that to 46.61, which is the TD9 count breakdown level. So it's going to go do battles in that area out there. I hope that that helps you out. I do want to go ahead and get to how the market's going to likely make its next top. I will stay on this chart uh, system here just for a moment. We're taking a look at the New York Stock Exchange. New York Stock Exchange made its way up to its TD9 count breakdown level, 15.541. So that's the first thing that we're going to take a look at. The second thing we're going to do is go take a look at that advanced decline oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange. We're going to go ahead and change panels out here. We're going to go to the black background screens. Here, what you can see 
His advanced decline oscillator reading right now is up at 281. So assuming that we close the day and we're up in this area here, every time for the last couple of years, four years that is, out here, every time we get up to this level, the way that the market makes a top is it makes a top with a declining tops in the advanced decline oscillator with price moving higher. That's a divergence pattern. You can see this one here in July of 2023, in June of 2023, in uh, April of 2023, in uh, February of 2023 uh, again up at uh, tops in August of 2022 so you can see the pattern that I've got on my screen here odds favor that what we're going to see here now when you close above plus 150 you're overbought but what it also tells us is that we should expect and anticipate higher highs out there it's not that it can't turn down right now it's not that this pattern you know is is a hundred percent but boy for the last four years this is how the markets have formed a top and that signal coming for the New York Stock Exchange. Now, if that's going to happen, that means that we're going to have to see the New York Stock Exchange close above that 15, 541, 38 level. So if that unfolds, and we know, and this can take a week or two uh, to unfold out here, but that's how the next top is likely to happen. So glad to leave you with that for your fun Friday. Have a fantastic weekend, folks. Be safe out there, and I'll look forward to seeing you on magnificent, marvelous Monday. Have a great weekend.